Okay. I'm, one of the last questions I'm going to ask you is, is so regarding where do you see the ed tech? Where, where do you see the big next, you know, the, the big thing, the next big thing that's going to happen in ed tech? You know, what, what do you think is going to be really in, important going forward? So I, so I, I thought about this because, you know, we spoke and you said you're going to ask you a couple of questions. I thought about this and I thought, I wonder if there's a where and a what to this. Okay. I, the, 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 I, I think we talk about where, okay, where in the world what might we see something okay and this is this is just mark house talking to himself really okay where where right there's no evidence in this at all but it strikes me that education is quite a conservative thing and it doesn't really like change and as we discussed earlier it's quite conservative so those well-established um areas of education might be more difficult but i think africa is really interesting you know very very young population mm. Okay, starting to digitize incredibly quickly. Okay, doesn't have all the baggage perhaps that that other places have. All right, has has just insane amounts of potential. Okay, d down there in Africa, and I wonder if it's going to be maybe something like that. You know, that 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 might be where we might see something rather than looking looking here which might, might be more difficult perhaps regarding the what i think i think and i'm biased on this one but i do think the whole assessment thing is 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 very very interesting at the moment because if we think about assessment certification as currency mm. okay so i want you to think of a moment it's a currency you buy stuff with it if you get qualified, it buys you into a university or it buys you into a job. Or it's a currency. It's what it is, okay? And where are we seeing huge amounts of disruption at the moment? We're seeing huge amounts of disruption in the currency world. Okay, if you think about things such as um, open banking and we think of things such as the new fintech banks, Monzo, these sort of guys, and then you think about even further along things like Bitcoin, okay, where now you're, you're essentially got... Um, the, arguably the democratization, democratization of currency. It's a different way of completely looking at currency, okay? And obviously the regulators are looking at this, okay? I'm, you know, sort of thinking, well, you know, if, if, if we think that qualifications are a currency, okay, all right? I, I, I think this stuff there, and we're starting to see it a little bit. Coursera got sold recently, okay, for a lot of money. And, and they essentially, what they do is they, they essentially manufacture currency, okay, if we argue that. And um, I think uh, um, I, I, th I think that Google was just you know, recently released a bunch of certificates you can take. So I think you can train yourself to be a data analyst in relatively short order for relatively little money, okay? And yet it's all backed by them and backed by industry. So I think, I think there's something there that that it just doesn't it just doesn't seem that the way that we certified and assessed people to this point is going to be the way that we're going to certify and assess people in the longer term. I don't know. It's just it's just something there to me saying it, that that can't be right, but I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I tend to agree. And actually, there's already been talk as well, isn't there, where yeah. she's, she's been talking about you know more vocational qualifications yeah. anyway. You know, moving the, the the you know moving the platform, which which I, I've sort of a tendency to agree with. You know, we're basically trying to build these young children and adults up to become, you know, people who are you know ultimately productive when they grow older. And in, in whichever way that is, you know, that could be working in charities in you know in different countries or whatever they want to be, but they're being productive in the sense of you know I'm, I'm in a wider sense rather than taxpayers. <laughs> so I think. You know, so ultimately, you sort of look at them and sort of go, well, actually, you know, maybe giving them lots of different opportunities to test themselves in these different sort of vocations might be a, a, actually a positive way, step forward to moving the sort of goalpost rather than sitting down an exam. You know, ultimately, lots of these things about doing exams, you know, when you get into the marketplace now, you know, there's, there's Google. You can basically give you an answer within seconds. You know, you don't need to necessarily memorise things as much. Yeah, I think it, it's... As I say, I'm not any sort of savant here, okay, who's going to tell you one way or the other. It's just, um, just, it just, it just, going back to the Africa thing, really, you know, if you wanted to transform millions and millions of people, you know, and uh, up, up their education and everything, it, it, 
you know, is the is the quickest way to do that to to march them all into an exam room, you know, once a year to sit some papers and you know transport them in a truck to get them marked and all this sort of stuff. Surely that that surely that's not the the the, the way that you would get it done. I, I wouldn't think. Okay, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know. And then so so that, that that's that's my thing that I'm interested in at the moment. I think. Um, uh, as I say, just going back to the start of the call, I mean, I'm sort of privileged to be in an industry that is hugely innovative. And the, the thing that depresses me sometimes is sometimes when I see people sort of saying, oh, you work with EdTech, that's just not innovative. Or you work in education, God, why can't it more innovative? Oh, you are kidding me, man. It's like the most innovative space you can be. Let me show you, let me take you down to see this local primary school teacher. There's the most innovative person you're going to meet, okay? Let me take you to this... Um, you know, to go and see this product manager who's running this MIS over here. Look at the stuff they're doing over here for parents. That's like so innovative. Okay. All right. But the transformative thing is 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 more difficult. And that's where it should be, because it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I agree. So what's it what's the next big thing for RM then? So ultimately, you know, RM, you know, ultimately they've got loads of different solutions that they can offer uh, offer the education system. So what do you think is the next big thing? Where where do you see you know what what is the the big rm piece oh goodness uh, for those people on the call who don't know that rm sort of have three or four bits to its business it actually has a um a, a warehouse full of stuff which is a bit like uh, amazon so it has a bit, something called tts and if you tip up a school everything that fell on the floor would be from rm okay it also has um a services business and sometimes you'll walk in a school and you'll see a guy in an rm t-shirt wandering around and then um it also has a uh, a high stakes assessment business so it's something Mark scripts in Singapore, in the Middle East, and down to the Caribbean. And it also it also has a software business where it runs an MIS and all, all the bits and bobs. So I think you'll see um, from RM's point of view, um, there is a, a, a heavy, uh, uh, to give you an idea, I mean, up until last year, I think we had about five product managers. And when I counted today, I think we had 18. Wow, okay. that's great. So, so there is there is a real focus on 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 doing things here right now, and I think that you'll see a bunch a bunch of stuff coming through. And inevitably, as I said in this call, a lot of it will be sustaining innovation. Mm. Right? It, it will be because because that's just the way it is. But hopefully, we will find a few things which are going to be like, oh, that's really interesting. That's a little bit different. Okay, it won't be the lack of trying. I mean, but, but most VCs, I think, that in Silicon Valley will probably invest in nine companies and hope to get one winner okay you know rm is sort of in that game in a way if we're going to build stuff okay we need to have a go at some things and see what works yeah but the, the but the thing is we know we have to do it we know we have to do that because that's for the health of the health of the business and everything else but i'm excited i'm really excited we've been there we've been there sort of five years and businesses ebb and flow in the way that they behave but um i i'm, I'm i think that RM is, is, is doing some decent stuff at the moment and uh, there'll be some stuff coming along the pipe. Yeah. Well, the, the thing is, and going back to your point, you know, ultimately when you try and do transformational stuff, some stuff has to fall down by the wayside. You know, the thing about right. transformational innovation is, you know, you, you basically are trying to do something which no one else has thought of, in which case then sometimes it's just not commercially, for, you know, viable. Exactly. Sometimes it is commercially viable. Yeah, I say I, say I, sort, of, um, I sort of work in room 71 and a half. <laughs> And people go, but what do you mean you work in 71 and a half? Well, they'll say, well, there's only three rooms on this corridor. Uh, to my left is room 101, and that's where things go to die. Okay. And the other room is room 42, which is from the Douglas Adams, which is the answer to the world and the other universe and everything. So basically, I'm halfway between the two. I'm in room 71.5. But, you know, there might be some stuff here which will just go to room 101 and never get seen again. All right, but there might equally be something in here which might go to room forty-two, and we're like, "Wow, that's brilliant!" But yeah. and and you've got to be, you've got to be happy to live in that environment. You know, I spend most of my day, most of my day saying, "I don't know." That's literally why I spend, I would say I would say I don't know more than anything else during the day. Yeah, when, when's this product going to be ready? I don't know. <laughs> Is it going to be a success? I don't know. Uh, you know, it, 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 that you know, and, that, and that's how I spend most most of my days. I don't know, you know, because we we just go, we constantly go through a um, uh, um, uh, a, a, a build um, 
test and learn thing. You know, we just go round and round and round in circles until we get to a certain point and go, oh, that's just terrible. This is never going to fly. <laughs> right, let's put that in room 101. Uh, the, we had a look at it. But, you know, who thought a flying skateboard was a good idea? Jeff, was that you? <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, we've tested it down the primary school and they're not having it. <laughs> but that's where innovative, you know, that transformation of innovation comes from. You know, in the day, people have tried so many things. I've seen things even like, you know, um, like a prick stick for, for butter and things. You know, you see so many different, you know, different ways to solve which people will see as innovation. But, you yeah. know, ultimately, things have to fail. And, and actually, from a product perspective, as you're, you know, as you know, as being a product manager, you know, I think some of the rest of the business sometimes don't understand it, but product definitely understands some things. That, 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 that's it. And, you know, my background as a teacher and, you know, even after 20 odd years, that was my daily experience. If I had six lessons in a day, one would probably tank, all right, simply because I tried to do something a bit different and it just didn't work. You know, it didn't work, you know. So you come from that background where you're constantly, you're constantly innovating and testing and everything and, and all the rest of it, all right? And, um, you know, in 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 product, it, you have to have the same sort of mentality. You know, particularly in particularly where I am at the moment. Previously, I was on Integris and Unify, and that was just a, the product was just in a different position. Yeah. Right? So at that particular position, there there was there had to be a high degree of certainty. You know, how many do you think we're going to shift this year? What's it looking like, etc. So that was a much more certain type thing. Established market, we know our customers, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas right now, it's you know, um, I don't know is the answer and we're going to go and try and find out yeah it's, it's interesting because you're right M mis you know mis companies or mis's are uh, it's quite a mature thing in the sense of you know that they're, they're, they're around they probably in a lots of cases functionally do the same thing they may be, do it differently in the way that they manage it and you know they're obviously ones with better ui ones with better ux you know whatever but uh, you know but fun functionally i think they're all relatively they understand the functionality needs to be in an mis because it's quite a mature market I think, I, the one thing i I'd, 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 i suppose is a question as much as anything i think one of the things i don't think is used enough is probably the data that's in yeah. the mis i think there's lots more insights that could potentially be you know highlighted for teachers and for heads and for the senior leadership team you know is, is that do you think that's i do I, I do i think that i think a nice thing that i'm seeing quite a lot at the moment is is um is, is is people are starting to use the word insight yeah okay. and, I, and i really like that i really like that okay because it forces you to think slightly differently you know i think we said before you know but if if i see one more data dashboard i'm just going to put my fist through the screen okay i don't need more data i don't need honestly i don't need any more and i don't need any more dashboards i really don't all right what i want is some insights here that can help me to do a little bit better. And that's hard, it's difficult to do. But if anyone's using any of the sort of big platforms, the Google and the Microsoft stuff at the moment, you know, they're, they're trying really hard to give you insights, you know. Um, you know, so they'll say, you know, for, for example, helping you to manage your email inbox is quite clever at the moment because they, they, they sort of, the, the intelligence running behind it, A, takes stuff out, but then also flag stuff that it thinks you might be interested in. And that's really cool. Yeah, and I think that we will see that. I'm seeing some bits and bobs around the um, uh, uh, the ed tech space in in various learning platforms and other things where that is definitely where things are going. I think, and I think now that a lot a lot of it is dependent, of course, on the on on the machines you can access. You know, because most things are hosted somewhere. Mm. You know, but as, as those as those machines get more powerful, whether it's from Google, Microsoft, AWS, or whatever, okay, or whatever, then then I think that it'll start to happen, all right? Because people will want, well, that's what they want. I mean, when, when I was teaching, you know, that it's a concept of fences at the top of the cliff or, am, or ambulances at the bottom, yeah? And fences at the top are really cheap, ambulances are really expensive. And yet we've almost got an entire education system built on ambulances at the bottom. And a whole bunch of products are all about ambulances at the bottom, yeah? And it's almost like somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, see that kid, he's fallen over. Like, that would have been great if you just told me 10 minutes ago that that kid was going to fall over. I might have been able to do something about it, yeah? But, but, but at the moment, we have dashboards that essentially tell us that the kid has fallen over. Yeah. That, that kid's fallen over. That, well, that, that's tremendous. 
Okay, it'd be really good if you could talk me a bit further along. And and there are some good assessment products which are trying to do that, and they're, they're trying to help people to do it. Um, yeah. I think we're just at the start of that right now. Okay, where where it'll get it'll it needs a lot of because <laughs> sometimes I don't know about you, Nick. I get some crappy insights from Microsoft. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like you know, it's like yeah. I think you want to pay attention to this email. Well, I'm not really in the market for double glazing at the moment. I'm just not. <laughs> you know, how did you think that was a thing? I'm yeah. with you 100. I think even LinkedIn is now moving down that road as well. Yeah, yeah. So you're talking, yeah. I'm not interested in what the thing that you're suggesting I should be interested in. No, if, you, if, you, if you're a busy teacher, I mean that that's going to drive you insane pretty quickly. <laughs> So, so you might then go back to your dashboard and say, I'll just work this out for myself, thanks very much. So I think this is really, really early days on that. But you'd like to think that it would get better. better it's it's like the Amazon thing, isn't it? Amazon are yeah. quite good because they're basically, or even eBay sometimes, they're quite good as well by saying, you know, this is the sort of thing you've been looking into. By the way, did you know there's a bunch of children who potentially are moving in the same direction. You know, that's yeah. what you want to hear. You want to go, all right, so actually there's a trend based on these children who have actually have fallen over. Here's a bunch of children who might fall over that brick that these other six children have yeah. already fallen over. <laughs> I, I, I guess then the concern is you do get this sort of algorithmic bias, you know, that's that, and that is really terrifying, you know, because then, you know, it's it's despite our best efforts it's not actually surfacing um insights which are or the insights of being serviced have a bias to them okay and and that that is if you if you read about that, that that's a real problem once you go down that route and obviously in education the very fact that the insights were biased would would cause real problems but i, th I think there's something there to, to 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 maybe to help people to make better better quality decisions i think but, um, and, and I think you're absolutely right. And, and again, this then comes back to, you know, the, none of this innovation is about replacing a teacher. No. The, the teachers absolutely are the experts. It's more about saying, you know, you're busy. Have a look at these other three children alongside, you know, the ones that you just looked at who you've seen fall over and been reported on. There's actually three more alongside you that might do. You know, you, you make the judgment call on is that going to be the case? And you're right. You, what you don't want to get to is though the teacher just goes, you know, I'm, I am busy, so I'm just going to rely that basically that's the case. And yeah. Try and put some interventions into place which don't actually suit those kids. Yeah, I mean, the I, I, I absolutely concur with you. You know, I mean, I had kids of my own, and um, it, you know, if you ask me what a good school was, or a, you know, really, it's like is the teacher quite nice? You know, they do they care about my kids. Are they trying to do their best? You know, and this sort of stuff. It, it, it comes down to that sort of, because it's a very human type thing, you know. Um, and sometimes, I mean, that, you have to be a little bit careful because that can be a little sort of, bit sort of middle-class guardian type stuff, you know, because we still have to, you know, there's a lot of children who rely on the school to make sure these kids can read and write and, you know, do everything. So, I, so I'm conscious of that. But e even then, you know, there is a line where, we, we you know, that the big thing about during the pandemic was the human bit, you know, yes, schools, we know schools aren't perfect. And we know that they're not great. But there's just something right about putting kids in a safe environment for a day where they can, you know, have playtime, go to lunch and, and learn from each other. That's just a really, really healthy thing to be able to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, you know, we don't want them on their online course all day because it's just really not, not even though they learn a bit more, just not in the round it's not a great thing yeah I, th I think we're sort of working out a little bit at the moment perhaps yeah no, no I, I totally agree i think it's interesting at schools isn't it because you, you can easily talk about education assessment and all the academic parts yes but actually that social bit is and social interaction you know in some ways is 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 equal you know to their education as you know from a from an academic perspective, the social. Uh, absolutely, I mean, but one of the things that we're doing at the moment on the on the thing I'm working on at the moment is the whole like, whole thing about peer learning. Okay, uh, peer learning. You know, I I wrote another piece recently about. I used to teach swimming, Nick. Yeah, I used to teach swimming. Believe it or not. Okay, tell you what, man. If you want, if you if you think if you want to, if you want a tough gig, teach twenty five kids how to swim. It's just like I'm not sure how I even survived. Anyway. Okay, but the, but the deal was, okay, if you've got a kid who can swim, yeah. and when I started to teach them, I used to throw them loads of what I call swim tech, all right? So the first thing was my armbands. That, that didn't help. I'd throw them a rubber ring. 
Then they'd have a float. Then you put something on their feet. And basically, they were a swim tech that they were sort of swimming, but they were instead just sort of floating about on the on the thing. Because they had so much swim tech. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> right. What I, what I realized was actually the thing that made a difference is if I put that kid in with another kid who was a bit better swimmer than they were. Yeah. And gave them a float each. And what, what happened was the other kid taught that kid how to swim effectively. Okay, so they still had a little bit of swim tech because they had a float, all right. But that whole social thing was 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 the thing that actually did it, and that's why you need kids together. Oh. Okay, you know, okay. and me me because if not, the route I was going down, it's like right, we, we you just need more swim tech, more swim tech. Okay, a lot of flashing. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of flashing going on, you know. But the uh, you're right, you know that whole that whole school thing is is. It's so much more than, you know, we have a role to play in technology. We have a role to play. We absolutely mm -hmm. have a role to play. Okay. And I think if you get it right, you can add real value to a school. And lots of people on your, you've talked to here, they do a tremendous job of that. Um, equally, it is about finding that sort of sweet spot, isn't it? You know, because if you go the wrong side, it just, people are not happy. And I, I understand why. Yeah. And, and you should never use technology for technology's sake. You know, going back to your point just a minute ago, I think that's really, really relevant. You know, I think, um, um, and and uh, uh, you know, I, I absolutely it resonates for me because ultimately we 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 sort of helped a niece sort of swim, but actually we didn't. It was actually a friend that jumped in. <laughs> that's you know, it. She didn't really want to jump in, and then a friend that she found on holiday jumped in, and she just went yeah. in. And you're there going. Well, I've been asking you to do this for the last hour or so. <laughs> and, you, and you didn't want to do it. You're too scared. But as soon as somebody else did it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, I think you know, if, if, if I can get my little product to work or fly or something, the, 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 one of the major wins is the fact that they can have, the teachers can maybe have a little less time that they're marking and a bit more time to help the kids. And I know there's lots of people trying to do that right now, right? Because, you know, that's just, that's just the thing, isn't it? You know, you know same on the in the MIS and everything else, it's like, can we just save a bit of time here? Because then people can get off and actually teach the kids a bit. Yeah, I, I think. I totally agree. And I think uh, and I think that's a really good point to um, end on. Thank you very much. You know, it's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been fantastic. <laughs> a lot, you know, uh, uh, one, it's all of, one, I, I think I learned something a little bit better, actually, regarding innovation. I, sh I should really keep that in mind. Um, but also, at the same time, I think people who are watching as well, Will gain a, a great insight into um, in, into actually how product management should be thinking, but also businesses themselves. You know, not just product management, but also businesses. And 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 don't be scared of failing on a, on on innovation. That's for sure. I think that's a good thing. Well, th say. thanks very much. It's been great. I mean, it's a, uh, it's been a pleasure to actually come on and not you know just talk about things in you know a bit more in generality rather than about uh, thing. And uh, I, I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much.